What is LTE? That's actually an interesting question. I think perhaps we go a little bit back in history. We remember or might not remember all of it, but there were previous cellular standards. You know, some people, the older people like me, might remember 1G and then there was a 2G and then there was a 3G. And what LTE is, it's that next generation of technology, providing much, much better performance um, to customers and much better capacity. I don't think we'll see any commercial launch of LTE this year. At the moment, there are a few factors that prevent us from launching it. Um, the main factors are spectrum and devices. I'll talk about devices first. Devices currently are still quite expensive. There are many, many devices out there. One can go buy LTE devices, but they are expensive. And secondly, they don't necessarily always support the frequency band in each country, each LTE frequency band. You don't get devices that support all LTE frequency band. And secondly, spectrum. Networks require spectrum to roll out LTE. If you don't have additional spectrum to roll out LTE, it might affect the service of the current customers when you try and squeeze them into less spectrum. Currently, the, the biggest hindrance um, with respect to the deployment of LTE from a NETO point of view is definitely spectrum. If I look at what we've done over the last few years, obviously, you often have to replace equipment to allow for new technologies, and that's exactly what we've done and what we've been doing, with, uh, doing in the last few years. We've replaced already 60% of all the base stations in the network, and we now have a technology called Single RAN, which will allow you to deploy LTE quite easily without much cost increments on those base stations. The other thing that we've done is we've also deployed and self-built a transmission network. We've deployed microwave to base stations, we've deployed fiber to base stations. Currently, we have more than a thousand of our base stations connected by fiber. We have more than three and a half thousand base stations connected by microwave. So we have put everything in place ready for the launch of LTE, should we require that. But Spectrum is going to be the key to unlocking the performance and capacity and custom experience of LTE. At the moment, LTE is not a necessity. If we look at our HSPA Plus network, and some people might have heard about that, the current technology roadmap that we're on, there are still future steps associated with this. Currently, we have 60% of our network on what we call dual carrier, allowing, in theory, peak throughput of 43 megabits per second. We've already tested 86 megabits per second um, without adding additional spectrum, you have to add additional software and you obviously have to have the device to support that. And there are subsequent steps to that. Um, they are even talking about 168 megabits per second in that roadmap. So in the short to medium term, probably not a major requirement for LT in South Africa or any other market in Africa. Firstly, it uses spectrum more efficiently, and whenever you use anything more efficiently, it becomes more cost-effective, so that's certainly a benefit. Um, what it does is it also supports more frequency bands than any other technology, so it's far more flexible around where you can deploy it. Thirdly, it also allows an operator to construct a network more cost-efficiently, um, and if the network is more cost-efficient and more simple, then it translates into costs and price at the end of the day. And I think probably the most important benefit of LTE is the performance it's going to provide to consumers. It has phenomenal com performance. Um, the initial version of LTE will have a performance, a certain performance, but there are also subsequent steps to the LTE development roadmap. And those steps, um, they have even trialed up to one gigabits per second performance on LTE at the moment. 